What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and today we have another Pokemon opening. We're continuing that Charizard hunt that we started a couple episodes back. Uh, not only for the shiny Charizard, but that rainbow one as well. So we have another one of these Burning Shadows ETBs and a Charizard Hidden Fates tin. So we're definitely guaranteed at least one Charizard. Um, and I do like the idea of doing these Burning Shadows openings every once in a while. I will say though that, you know, I'm very curious about the print quality. I think so far we've opened two of these and one of them, uh, we got a really good hit, but the print quality was absolutely horrible. And to be honest, I also want to talk about this, you know, this surge of Burning Shadows product that kind of happened, well, to me it felt like it was out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, you can find these things, and uh, people were saying in the comments in the previous video, like, oh, I've been seeing these all over, like, Target and stuff like that, and I completely agree. Uh, so, it seems like that there's just another print wave of Burning Shadows cards, which I kind of have mixed feelings about, so I figure we'll talk about that a little bit as well. So we have four shots, and I do like mixing in the Hidden Fates still because, one, it's still so fun to open, and I feel like the ratios are much better compared to Burning Shadows, where if you get, like, one card out of your Burning Shadows box, like, all right, that's that might be better than average um, compared to Hidden Fates. If you get, like, nothing, I would say it's pretty rare. It can happen, obviously, but that's pretty unfortunate. And, all right, so we're about ready to start and here is a code card for that Charizard still really useful and let's see we'll do a couple burning shadows mix in hidden fates all right we did get a phone call but we are back on track no idea what I was talking about but here's that code in case I didn't show that off yet here is that beautiful Charizard one thing I'm wondering is uh, when we start submitting stuff to PSA, which we will do. Um, wondering wh what, if anything, beyond like the Charizard, should we ha send? Um, you know, maybe some of these Charizards. I don't think they'll be worth much, but I think do think they would be just like nice little things to have. Uh, some of these Charizards, we have a bunch of them, and so we'll do two Burning Shadows followed by ETB. Hopefully, we get some good hits in both sides. Of course, the big things we're looking for are those Charizards, and ooh, when I look at the side, something's up with one of the cards. Either it's a good hit, but it looks like it might be damaged again. Oh my gosh, look at this. The terrible print quality continues, and this is the rare slot. Look at all this edgeware. Like, this is... I feel like this won't even pass for a 9. I feel like this would get starting off at a, at a near mint... Uh, near mint to mint eight, which always bothers me how they kind of start with a hybrid kind of, or eight is kind of awkward. It's not near mint, it's not mint, it's in between. But all right, first pack we have a Buffalant, Electric, Simisage, Morlul, Caterpie, Meryl, a Rhyhorn, Sandy Guest. Our reverse is a Mount Lanakila, and what is going to be that damaged hit? We have, ooh, a Tapu Bulu Full Art. And actually, a lot of times these things look off-center, but then when I look close, yeah, it is off-center, but not as much as it looks. Because uh, sometimes when I look at the top, it's like, oh my gosh, there's like no border, but there's a very thin one. But man, so much damage. It's very, very frustrating. Um, but, uh, oh, I do want to talk a little bit about this. Yeah, Sudden Rise of Burning Shadows products available. All right, so we did get a full art hit, which I'm pretty happy about. Bulu is take it or leave it. And, uh, oh, speaking of Bulu, um, over the weekend, you know, uh, spending time with a girlfriend, and sometimes we just open up some random packs, and she doesn't like to be on camera. So we were just doing it on the side, and we are opening up some Burning Shadows stuff from these uh, random tins that you can pick up at Costco. And, oh no, we opened up a Hidden Fates tin, and I pulled a gold card, but it was another Bulu. <laughs> I did think it was pretty good uh, centering and everything, so I put that in a perfect fit. No, not a perfect fit. A penny sleeve and a card saver, so uh, potentially we could send that off to PSA. I think it is a good candidate for 10, but uh, man, we pulled, let's see, we pulled a Coco, one Coco, and like three, four Bulus. <laughs> So, uh, so like, we, we do good, uh, oh wait, this is Hidden Fates, we do good getting lots of good hits, a lot of 
big hits, but uh, just keep getting the same ones over and over again. But uh, yeah, so we did get a full art. And alright, yeah, as far as Burning Shadows suddenly becoming available. On the one hand, it is nice to be able to do openings and you don't have to spend a whole lot to get the packs. Ooh, a r shiny Riolu and it is super textured, which I really like. So, um, it doesn't seem very well centered though. So, that one probably won't be great. I'm not sure when it comes to non-GX Shinies, how many of those are worthwhile sending off PSA. If you have any thoughts about that, let me know in a comment down below. I mean, even the biggest hit Jarzard is coming down in price very rapidly which isn't gonna be that which is not that surprising but i think that means like you know none of the cards will be huge hits when it comes to psa although print quality seems to have gone down significantly in my opinion all right we're back to burning shadows and i definitely did the all right let's see this is the rare slide i had to move around a couple times super off-centered and yeah still some edgeware i'm not sure if you guys can see it not as much as the last one, which was a full art hit. Escape ropes, I'll put those off the side, it's pretty good. But Burning Shadows, suddenly becoming available, they're all over target. Um, ooh, Galissapod, okay, two hits out of ETB. We will take that any day. Terrible print quality though, this is very disappointing. And it seems to always be the rare slot, like, if it was the commons, you know, actually the commons are pretty bad. They're not as bad though. But, you know, obviously that one I don't mind as much. So this is still very disappointing. Um, a couple of people have said that, you know, they've been open some of these and haven't experienced any problems. The first couple I opened did not. These last two were pretty bad, though. So I'm not sure what to take out of this. Actually, this time the rare slot is not bad. In fact, I feel like the commons and uncommons are worse. All right, if there's a time to get that big hit... Hopefully it's in this pack. We've been putting it aside super scoops. I think we have enough of those. So Viper, Rotom decks. Uh, so as far as I wonder, I hope this doesn't have too much of impact to the Rainbow Charizard. Maybe the fact that the print quality is so bad that it won't. But I feel like one thing that does help the card is that it's old enough where at least, you know, maybe a couple months ago, you couldn't really buy it in stores anymore. You kind of had to buy it from someone that just kept some stuff sealed. And you kind of had to pay a premium for the opportunity to get the Rainbow Charizard. But now that's no longer the case because it appears that there was another print wave. So in that respect, I'm not crazy about this whole situation. Obviously, we're taking advantage of it because I like opening Burning Shadows. But I'm not a fan of... What kind of pack is this? Is this Hidden Face maybe? I'm not a fan. Ah, oh, we got it right. Not a fan of that it did happen. Um, although, we'll open it if we can. So, let me know if you have any thoughts about that. And uh, do you agree that this is enough evidence to say, yes, there's just been a, simply another print run. And, you know, at this point, you know, nothing is ever out of print, I guess. Which, when it comes to secondary value, obviously can decrease it. Uh, if, I don't know, let's say, well, super, like, a hundred, almost... You know, 100% won't happen, but let's just say they blew that out of proportion, took it like three levels up. It's like, hey, you know what? These these gold stars, people like these gold star cards. So we're just going to reprint the whole set and then just add more to the market. Um, like that's, you know, complete exaggeration and very hyperbolic. But, uh, you know, obviously that would have an effect on things. Noibet, Inke, and I do think... You know, it's been long enough, although you still see like some XY products. That I always just assumed that those were left over as opposed to reprinted. But like, Sun and Moon era is basically done. Sword and Shield is right around the corner. So, yeah, not crazy about it. But if we can pull the Charizard, we're going to definitely at least try. So let's go. We got Pumeria, Simipore, Stuffle, Pansage, Krogunk. Pikachu, Pampor, a Meryl, then just a Mudsdale. And yeah, it seems like the regular rares are okay. I'm not sure about the hollows, but the GXs are a little bit bad, and then the full arts are terrible. And so are the full art supporters, I guess. Alright, let's see. This is Hidden Fates. 
But yes, Sword and Shield is right around the corner. I'm very excited. And pre-releases uh, pre are coming up. We'll try to attend a handful of those. See if we can't get a couple extra build B&B &B boxes. And then hopefully we can find a vendor or a store that will sell them early um, or as early as they're allowed to. They kind of have that uh, before release date. I think like it's like the day after their pre-release, they can take, they're allowed to sell it. So hopefully we can find one of those. And I think maybe probably next time, uh, later this week, when we do our Pokemon episode, we will take a look at the options that we have at this point to pre-order a booster box. Uh, in my experience, the you do manage to save some money doing so, uh, but you just get a little bit later. Uh, most vendors, which I do, a lot of times it's through Game Nerds or some eBay vendors. Uh, I get it's like the Monday after release or or sometimes a little bit later from eBay vendors. But we'll go through those different options. What kind of options you still have at this point uh, when it's just, yeah, very close. A couple, few weeks away. All right, we only got two packs remaining. On the Hidden Fate side, I would say this is a pretty bad opening. These cards are terrible quality. Hidden uh, Burning Shadows. I actually think we got, we got more hits out of a Burning Shadows ETB than the Hidden Fates. Uh, although we only opened one tin. Guzma, very nice. Sneasel, Alolan Grimer. Charmander, Crub Brawler, Meowth, the Dabbing Duskull. And then just a Alolan Raticate. <laughs> Actually, no, this one does have a few nicks, but it's very disappointing. Like, the best quality is just the regular rares. That is terrible. Ooh, wow, this pack just like melted open. Alright guys, can we get some last pack magic? As always, if you do want to support the channel, uh, hit that like button. Uh, subscribe if you're not already. Check out one of our Twitch streams if you've never seen them. We're doing tons of giveaways on there. And uh, alright, here we go. Last pack. Paris. Ekans. Psyduck. Staryu. Cleave Fairy. Oh, always have to have that Vaporeon, although we never want it. So, but he's always here, almost always here. And for our last pack, we have a Jolteon. Lots of evolutions in this pack, but none of them are GX. None of them are shiny. So that's going to be it for me today. As always, guys, like, comment, and subscribe all down below. I'm Moana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.